Welcome to Whiskey, Wine, and DIY. I'm Nick. And I'm Paige. And tonight we're coming at you with 200% more Snoop Dogg. Oh, yeah, there's been a lot of that lately. I'm sorry, but they're trying to cancel Snoop after he smoked a joint at the at the oh I almost said football game at the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know that game, that concert. But uh, there's a lot of things that I didn't know were going to happen at the Super Bowl. Like uh-huh. maybe NWA is going to come back. Like they're going to try to get them back together. Maybe there's going to be like a holographic Easy E. Holographic would have been cool. Maybe Ski Low is going to show up. <laughs> we don't know. But you know what? Coolio even right? Coolio. Coolio. Oh God. Um, but the one thing I did know, I didn't even know who's going to win. The one thing I knew is that Snoop would either be high or get high during the Super Bowl. Well, of course. Like, can he even go that long of the length of a song without smoking? Fuck your cancel culture. I'm sorry, but we don't, you don't cancel people. And I like, I don't, I don't know how else to. I don't, I don't even understand the whole, the whole, it's like the stupidest thing phrase ever to come out of our current time it's the fun little thing to throw out we're gonna cancel something i know but to me if you're gonna cancel a person that means you're gonna kill them well i've been listening to a lot of gangster rap lately and Mm. i say cancel these nuts (laughs) and there's a whole lot of whiny titty babies out there dude who want to cancel everything for people for being the least bit offensive the level of whiny titty babies in today's culture is so fucking ridiculous i don't understand how anybody gets anything done actually i know that's why we don't get anything done. that that is true fuck off let first of all leave everybody alone (laughs) you don't like it don't listen to it you know we left britney alone leave everybody else alone we didn't leave britney alone well somebody complained about it at one point in time and then it was a thing what you don't remember leave britney alone whole meme behind it no i just because i'm stuck on around free britney bed. so oh years before that baby oh like back in like the 2000 aughts i'm not gonna remember that i know i was drunk a lot then okay anyway no more canceling things all we're doing right now is we are proving things and we are talking about the good things and the best thing to talk about is clinkies 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 Okay, so Ooh, way to hit that high note. You like that? It's because somebody murdered these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Oh. Um, so tonight we are going to be lasering shit. Oh, is that why we're in the garage? We are in the garage. That's why it might sound a little different. It might sound a little echoey, and I apologize. I don't really have a good way with the way these mics are to to kill the echo too much. But we are gonna teach Paige, how to use the laser. Well, there are enough of them in our home. I should. There learn. are, but I think it's really important to understand the the value of one of the seven or eight units I have laying around the house. <laughs> one of them, uh, just in, in what it can do and how it can make you money and how it can just make you things, right? So how the fuck do you... You know about this stuff. How do I know about this stuff? I'm just I'm just saying what people are thinking. Um, I oh, because we already did this once. Okay. Um, okay, so just so we get Nick's credibility out there, this podcast has on YouTube what, like a hundred followers? Yeah. Um my my YouTube channel is Build Dad Build. I'll link it below, and I have about seventy eight thousand followers. I've reviewed mm-hmm. probably like what almost a dozen lasers at this point, maybe ten, eh, probably more like ten. Um, and I've and I've used them extensively, so I kind of know what I'm talking. Yes, about. you should see our garage. Yeah, it gets a little crazy sometimes. Mm-hmm. And specifically today, we're going to talk about my favorite. Well, one of my favorite lasers, my favorite diode laser. I guess okay. I should say qualify the, that shit. The X Tool D1 10 watt laser. Mm-hmm. Um, and without going into a ton of of description of it, it is just a very well put together uh, kind of low profile laser. It's 10 watts, so it's a little bit more powerful for a diode. 
And we are going to be teaching Paige how to, uh, what are we doing today? What are we going to? We are going to laser a wine flask. A wine flask, which is not really a thing. No, but. but Paige wants a flask. I want a flask. For a wine. Yeah. So I do have a couple of videos on how to laser a flask. I can link those down below as well. But we will be using some, um, we're going to be working with a, a, a stainless steel flask tonight. Sounds so good. We'll be using a like a what I call a transfer agent. It's called Enduromark to uh, prop the surface to make the uh, the the etch or the marking. So people don't correct me. You don't etch with a diode laser. You mark with a diode laser. Okay, good to know. Uh, but when you you can you could you can mark stainless steel just by itself, but it's kind of light. And Duramark will, it's a, it, like a spray that you put on top of it. Mm-hmm. That spray will make that much, much darker. So, okay, just not to ask all back. the questions because what's you the, are the layman. What's here. the difference between etching and marking? Like, why can't you call it etching? Okay, so etching is actually removing material. Okay. Okay, so when you, when you like technically, mm-hmm. And I say technically because I I think you're asking the right question. I think a lot of people don't know this. Technically, when you etch metal, Uh you take material off the surface, so it is cutting into it. Feel it. You could. It's Mm -hmm. no longer flat. I think a lot of people that want to etch with their laser, they want to mark it, which is basically what that's doing is applying. Like you use a transfer agent, you and you discolor the surface of the material. Oh, okay. So, like, when you get etched glass, it's not really etched, or is that really etched? It depends. It depends on Ooh. how you do it. So, there is there is transfer agents that you can etch, uh, in quote-unquote, etch glass with, which basically what you're doing is you're baking that material, like, super hot. You're baking it to the top of the glass. Yeah. So, with a... So, that's not etching. Right. So, okay. with, a, with a diode... Let's see if I can explain this easily with a diode etched glass Mm -hmm. glass um you when you feel it it would probably actually feel a little raised okay okay so if you sandblasted Mm -hmm. a glass and etched it that way or if you have a powerful enough co2 laser and you etch it that way which doesn't need a transfer agent you would feel kind of more of a divot okay so technically you're not etching a dia or you're not etching a glass with a diode laser either. You're you're kind of marking it or or you know, I guess microwaving something hot to it. <laughs> nice. You know, I mean it's like a hot pocket. All right. Uh, oh, but better than a hot pocket. Actually, I used to really love hot pockets in college. Hot pockets, ramen, wow. Um, next question. What's a diode? So a diode laser is basically the uh the weakest the weakest kind of laser, the weakest kind of hobby laser you're looking at. So you're looking at, um, it, and it's it, you're going to get into to some science that I don't know about. Mm-hmm. Um, and here's why: because a diode laser, I think max capacity of a diode laser is five watts. Okay. The way the X tool is ten watts is because it's actually focusing two five watt lasers into some sort of weird forty five degree angle mirror. Mm-hmm. And, and putting a 10 watt beam down. So is a watt like a lot of power or not? Well, it doesn't sound like a whole it's, lot. It, it is not, but you're, you're super focused as well. Right. So okay. like you remember old school incandescent light bulbs, right? Mm-hmm. Like a, like your regular light bulb in your house that you yeah. use is like a 30 watt bulb. Yeah, and that was really dim. It doesn't seem like a lot, but have you ever seen the little squiggly line inside there? Yeah. Okay, so imagine putting your finger on that. Okay. Uh, what does that feel like? I don't know. I've never done that. But, but. you've seen it, it, like it turns bright orange, right? It does, like it would burn. Yeah, okay. Because it's super heated. So oh, okay. that's that's the kind of what you're dealing with here. And then once you get into... So it gets a little, it gets a little weird because once you get into CO2 lasers, you are... You you have a tube that has CO2 in it. I don't, again, understand the science, but you get your wattages into like 40 to like 120, 150, you get around there. I, I Actually, I think I think CO2 lasers can just go way, way up there depending so on how- So are they that much more powerful? Yeah. Okay. Um, a lot of times they're, they're, they're either more powerful or faster. 
So maybe ah, maybe they can't maybe they can't speed. cut maybe they can't cut like thicker material, but they can cut the same amount of material faster in a diode. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. But then you get back into fiber lasers, which can actually mark metal in and given enough power can can etch metal. Um, so you're saying fiber like eat more or fiber like give me five fiber like eat more, but think okay. more of like fiber internet. Okay. So the way a fiber laser works <laughs> is you, it, it. So I told you about the diode, like the two diodes pointing at or like pointing at the mirror and coming down, right? Uh huh. Well, imagine you've got I don't know, like fifty of those diodes, and instead of focusing them in a bunch of different mirrors, they're focusing down fiber optic cable. Okay. Ooh. And then you can put, and then you can focus them all into one point. Oh, okay. <laughs> I got so you you're know. getting super, you're, you're getting like super heated. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of weird that you go from fiber to CO2 back to fiber. Or I mean, I'm sorry, a diode to CO2 back to CO2. Uh-huh. I said it again wrong again. Diode, diode to CO2, CO2 back, back to, to diode. diode. But you're taking a bunch of diodes and doing kind of the same thing. Ah, uh, so it's different. Yes. It is It is too bad that you, you didn't put cameras in here. I know, right? Um, but the thing is like, if you really want to see this process, go check out my YouTube channel. I can link, a, a, like I'll link the, I'll link the X tool, the, the, the unboxing video and the one where I actually do flasks uh-huh. down below. So if you want to go ch- see it in person, you know, it's probably much yeah. better. Uh, will look much better and is better produced than <laughs> yes. what we're doing right now. Exactly. This is Paige's education on the fly. Right. But, okay, so let's talk about the X-Tool a little bit. The X-Tool is um, one of the first modular uh, lasers, uh, I guess diode lasers that came out where it is super easy to assemble. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say it is because um, some of you that may be familiar with diode lasers know like like the Ortur Laser Master, which is like one of the big first ones that came out. And it's still a, it's still a solid unit, but it's a pain in the ass to put together. Yeah. When I got the X tool, it came in like five pieces. Uh huh. When I got the or, when I got the Artur, it came in like forty. So ah. the Artur took me about forty five minutes to put together. Uh huh. Granted, my first laser ever. Um, the X tool took me about fifteen with filming. Nice. So, so and, it's, and you're a very um not patient person, so that's good. I am not. Um, and it's just a solid unit. It's like, I like the fact that it's low profile. It doesn't shake as much as the, the laser master does. Um, and it's some people, so some people don't like this about it and some people do. They have their own software. You can use mm-hmm. Lightburn, which is kind of like the, the hobbyist industry standard for diodes yeah. with it. I've heard you talk about it a lot. But LaserBox Basic is their proprietary software. And for very... I wouldn't even say very easy projects, but like not super complex projects. Let's say uh-huh. that uh, Laserbox Basic is perfectly good for mm-hmm. that. So that's oh, that's what we'll be using tonight. And let's see, I'm trying to cover all my bases here. I will link to X Tool down below, and then I will also in, link to Enduramark. Find it. Oh yeah, you're marking stuff. So Enduramark is a laser marking spray that they contacted me. And wanted to know if it will work with my 10 watt laser because it's really, you're really supposed to use it with a more powerful laser. Oh, oh. So they sent me a bunch of their products and some of them worked, some of them didn't. Mm-hmm. But the black Endura Mark works really well. So we'll be using that tonight. Um, and the, so that you've got your black Endura Mark that marks on uh, stainless. Yes which is the flask we'll be doing tonight. And then we also have a charcoal glass, which that's the other thing that worked really well. And that's a that's a black marking on glass. Okay. Anyway, so after I dealt with Enduramark a little bit, I, I asked them if they would like give me a discount code. And then and they said, yes, the discount code would be build that build for 20% off of any product. So if you guys want to go out and check this out, you can... And uh, mm. and you can get you can get that discount. 
Okay, so now I am going to uh, I'm going to prep a flask for you, babe. All right, because that's what we're making. Yeah. So we're walking through. Okay, basically, I'm taking out a an eight ounce flask. I can't remember. Did we talk about the fact that I think a wine flask should be a thing? You did not, but you should. I totally. Th- I mean, if you can have all sorts of booze in a flask, you need wine in a flask. I need it for soccer. That's a brilliant idea. Mm-hmm. I like it. I like it. Uh, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to do like a super fine coat of this stuff on the stainless steel. I'm going to step away from the mic here in a second. I'm sure you can hear me. Rattling the can. Jerking my can. <laughs> well, because it looks like just a can of spray paint that he's but spraying on there. Please note. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Paige can repeat it. Um, we are in a closed garage. Does not smell like spray paint at all. We are in a closed garage. It does not smell like spray paint. Just in case you miss that. And I can attest, I don't smell anything actually. And he's currently spraying it. So, granted, he's not right next to me, but ooh, it made a pretty fine white misty coat. I like it. Can I take a picture of it? Yeah. So the crazy thing about this is. Not only does it etch really well, but a lot of other products that you use to do this, um, it's a pain in the ass to take them off. When I get done with this, I could just put it in the sink and r- rinse the rest of this off. It doesn't. It goes. It doesn't on, dry, right? Well, it dries, but it goes on kind of like a powder Ooh. instead of like a paint. Like I uh, like I'm being very careful to not touch it right now because I can't smudge it right now. Mm-hmm. So you just set it in the center of. I, oh, ooh. hands on shit. Probably need to pull my mic over here while I'm doing this. Um, I think I may have to take the honeycomb out. He's trying to multitask people. I am. Sometimes so, he does it better than others. So the honeycomb is for cutting uh, things on the laser. And so I currently have that sitting in here because I was cutting on it. Which normally is fine to have in there if you're going to engrave too. The problem is it's going to make it too hot. All right, so we have the big open square. <laughs> We're going to take both of them out so you can line it up. And now I get to line it up. I don't even know what that means. And then you're going to switch many places. Okay, what am I going to do? And we're going to talk you through this. Okay, so you want to hold, you want to hold the flask at this. So just don't touch the surface you're going to engrave. You're going to put it down here until you find a, like an X and Y coordinate just to like line you up. There you go. Very nice. And then one of the beauties of the X tool is that the, the gantry is just unlocked. So you can just grab that, pull it over here. Okay. And we're going to get it to where we want it. And then you're going to drop the kickstand on the side, which is this little guy right here. This is the focusing billet. The X tool actually has a kickstand on it. So do I need to center that on there? You don't need to center that on there, but I'm going to need to kind of like help you out here a little bit because I, I just can't see it's on the wrong side. Okay. Okay. So mainly what you want to do is there's a thumb screw right here uh-huh. on the left side. You're going to loosen that until this moves up and down. Hold on to the laser so it doesn't fall down on it. Loosen that. And then what you want to do is find kind of like halfway in between the top part of the flask and where it like, you know, and the bottom. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to split the focus between the top most part of the curve and the bottom most part, which is probably right about there with the kickstand. Oh, the kickstand is sitting there? Yeah. So like way up here? No, no, no. Just the kickstand needs to... The kickstand needs to touch the flask there. So, hold on. So right there, and then you're going to let this down until the kickstand touches the flask. Okay, are we touching? Yeah, we're touching. Okay, screw that in. Screw the thumb screw in. So the kickstand isn't in the center, the highest part. Doesn't matter. The kickstand... I I just misunderstood. Right. The kickstand is... This might be a little bit easier to understand on something that is flat... But the kickstand just f- like gives you your focal length. Okay. Since this is concave or convex, I can't remember which one. Um, convex. We want to be halfway in between the topmost point and the bottommost point in order to get like a decent amount of focus on the whole thing. Okay. 
Okay. So now we're going to turn the, the, so you're going to flip. There's a switch right there. Turn that on. Turn it on. This is going to give us our, <clears throat> excuse me. This is going to give us our uh, crosshairs. Uh-huh. So the X tool knows uh-huh. that those crosshairs are not where the laser is. Gotcha. It takes that offset into consideration. So now what we want to do is we want to move this up and we want to like kind of figure out where we want it to be. So that's about center, right? Look down the lid. Look over here down the lid. See what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. When you look from this angle, it doesn't look centered at all. Yeah. So yeah, you get a little screwy on, on convex objects. And then we want to decide where we want, where we want the, uh, the engraved to start. So you think like about there? Yes. Okay. So fairly so, close to the top. So why don't you come over here and we will get your settings. So you're back on your mic. Oh, back on my mic. Hi, Mike. Okay. So I'm going to measure this real quick. And what are you getting when you measure? I'm trying to figure out, <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out, like I, I want to find like kind of center and what it's going to look good on. So one of the things with a flask is you don't want to get too far like off that convex edge because you'll be out of focus and it, it just won't look good. Okay. On here, we're looking at about 60 uh, millimeters for width. And then height is not that big of a deal, but we're looking at about 100 millimeters height is where we're going to be. About. So are you measuring total or your goal? No, I'm, I'm measuring what, like the... the area that I want to laser. Okay. And I, I'm also looking at the fact that I don't want it to go more than over the edge. Okay. Gotcha. That makes sense. All right. Now you have picked a nice little thing that says. Probably well, not water. Yeah. Well, it's got a couple of, a, a couple of wine glasses clinking and then underneath it, it says probably not water. What we're doing here is we're going to select it. We're going to make sure that we uh, link them so they both move. And then we're, like our width is the most important one with a flask is we don't want to go over 60. So yeah, that's the 60. Okay. So when we're at 60, what we're going to do is we're going to punch into this so we can see it a little bit better. Zoom. Yes. And then if you hold the space bar down, you get the little hand and you can move it around. Okay. Um, we are going to do a couple of things now. One, the material we're going to pick right now is stainless steel. Okay. So it's important you choose the material. Yes. Okay. Well, here uh, or or your power and your speed, which uh, one of the beauties the beauties of Laserbox Basic is it does have some pre-programmed things in it, so like, it's like stainless an, steel. Gotcha. Like an auto set preset, right? Whatever. Bingy. So the folks that are following along that want to know, I don't know why this isn't picking it right now. That I can tell you, but I know you'll figure it out. Oh, there we go. Okay. So for the folks who are following along, the power is set at 100%. The speed is set at nine millimeters per second. Um, and is that is that those, those presets you're talking about then? Or? Yeah, that's okay. the stain, stainless steel preset. You still want to use the same preset, but basically, basically you can get away with doing um, less, or I mean, like, I guess, I guess faster. With the Endura Mark, but for this demo, we're just going to use the, the settings to kind of show how the laser works. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. And then we're going to pick our laser and we're going to come into a little deal here, which is going to like frame it up for us. We're going to find. Is that little deal called anything? Or It's just a working area before we go into. I like some of the stuff is, is not great to, um, I guess, <laughs> try to explain um, without without video. I got gotcha. you. But the main thing is, what we want to do is we want to frame right now because framing is going to tell us where our laser is going to go. Uh huh. So, are you ready to come over here and I watch am ready. the frame? Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, Wrong so side. I'm going to hit frame. Okay, hit frame. And that's telling us where it's going to do it. So, does that look like a good spot? Is that where you want it? Yes. Okay. All right, then we're going to hit start, and it's just going to start doing its thing. You're probably not going to see as much because I have the air assist on there. Okay. Is it okay that I'm watching it? or? Well, I wouldn't stare directly at it. Okay. Well, it's a little <laughs> flashing thing. Well, I mean, honestly, like when you're looking through the, uh, 
the shield or whatever, you're probably fine. But you should always be wearing a pair of, of uh, protective goggles like when you're in a room with a laser, especially if you have kids, uh, because they won't tell you that they're staring at it. That is very true. Watching it's kind of cool. It reminds me of like when you were watching a picture come out of like a dot matrix printer yeah. where it's like, bzz, 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 and you just see the picture kind of forming. Yeah, before I got more conscious about it, I definitely did get a little bit of uh, like eye burn from it because like you just get you get kind of stuck looking at it. Like you uh-huh. know you're supposed to wear your, your goggles, but you're like I'm just gonna look at it for a second, and then the next thing you know, you've been looking at it for like ten minutes, and then like you get a little headache and not all sorts of great stuff. Not, uh, hopefully, it's not permanently damaging your sight. No. Uh, well, I you know I do need readers now. I I think you needed readers before you got the lasers. I know, I know. I don't do it a ton. Um, I just, when I first got it, I noticed that that was a thing. And the thing is, like, you can't see it as bad here when you're doing, like, a, like a tumbler, especially glass. Uh-huh. You, there is, it fires blue light all over the garage. Because even though you're using a transfer agent, it still fires through it and shoots everywhere. Oh, because it's reflecting off the, all the... Yeah, the so, sides of the glass. So sometimes I'll have it going in here and I won't have my goggles on because I'm not in here, but I'll open the door and it looks like a disco in here because you're like just blue light. <laughs> Interesting. I'm glad I've never come home to that one. That would probably make me think that something was going terribly wrong. Terribly wrong. Um, anyway, so this, um, I mean, that kind of, I guess, I'm looking at the time and there's no way we're going to finish this before uh, it's definitely counting down faster. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's no way we're going to finish this before the podcast is over. So that is kind of your lesson in lasering. All right. I can't wait to see the finished product. Um, so we'll definitely post that on Instagram. Of course we will. And it'll probably be on the website too. Uh-huh. But in the meantime, who are you stalking? Oh, I knew you would ask that. And where did she go? Um. Wait. The person you're stalking is a woman? Right. That you, never happens. Do you know what she does? Scroll saw art. Yes. Or chainsaw art. Usually um, scroll saw art. Actually, usually it's scroll saw art. And I had, it was just right on the tip of my tongue until like a few minutes ago when we started talking. Oh, that's Ooh, funny. That's it cool. is off. I'm looking at the hearts that uh-huh. are going on there and I'm like, that's not centered. But look, they're not centered in the picture. Oh, yeah, the, the picture's set up for them to not be centered. I gotcha, I gotcha. Okay. I am following Heartful Home Designs. Heartful Home Design. Um, She actually, it's not like a ton of scroll saw stuff. I mean, there, it's both. Um, She does a lot of wall hangings, a lot of like, I don't want to say geometric, but like just kind of taking strips of wood mm-hmm. and doing things and then superimposing like scroll saw lettering over it. And I don't know why, but I'm just fascinated by some um, feathers, wood feathers that she made. Interesting. Your I, kids like, are fascinated by th- feathers. They're simple. And I, they're just like this simple decor piece. It looks like different pieces of found wood put together in a feather shape. And I absolutely love it. I, I don't know. Very cool. Very cool. But, hey, what was that? That oh okay sorry that looked at my heart I was just curious oh no no it's it's this is scroll saw and it's just a layer where things are cut out and then put on top of a flat layer underneath so nothing like laser cut art oh no nothing at all <laughs> <laughs> probably it probably uh, is a little because it was manually done probably a little uh, less detailed but still beautiful all right so who are you stalking so I can't find my phone but. <laughs> Um, I think I left it inside. Uh, I am just going to round it out and say that I'm fouling makeblock.xtool, which is the maker of the xtool. <laughs> All right. Do they post like work people do? Yes, they do. So it's very cool. Um, the There's also a Facebook group. That is, well, there's two Facebook groups. There's one devoted to like all of their machines, but there's a specific one to the D1. And it's a really good community of people. There's a lot of like really good information in there. There's a lot of great artists in there. Very cool stuff. Mm-hmm. So this was is actually a lot more simple than I thought it would be. Now, I realize that you have 
spent lots of time making mistakes. Yes. So you were letting me learn from that. Um, of course. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I was doing. And not Can having you hear me wink, wink. Well, in the fact that, uh, like, we did this was just super simple to do because you've already made a lot of mistakes and knew what not to do. So a lot of. Like if I just if I came down here and tried to do it by myself, would I? You'd probably ask a couple of questions, and I mean honestly, there is there's a learning curve, and mileage may vary on that learning curve. Mm-hmm. But I, well, would say, I like that expression. I would say <laughs> that, um, especially with like something like the X tool, where they have a very basic, simple software to start with. Mm-hmm. And it's fairly easy to put together to begin with. The, the learning curve is, is, is fairly not steep, whatever word that is. Um, and I say this because the first laser I got was like all assembly required. Uh-huh. The manual was horrible. And so I had to watch somebody else's YouTube on how to do it. And it still took me 45 minutes or something. Um, so can I cut stuff out with the X tool too? Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Wheels are turning. Wheels are turning. But after I got the uh, the Ortur, the original Ortur assembled, there was no like software for it. So, and I like I'm not a big fan of proprietary software. Yeah, I know how you feel about that. But. Like having that basic software there is kind of nice because you can start doing things right out of the box while you're watching like YouTube videos to learn how to use Lightburn because Lightburn is <sighs> Lightburn is a simple and very complex program at the same time. <laughs> like you can do simple stuff with it pretty pretty easily out of the box. Yeah, you can watch a couple of YouTube videos and get it. There are so many more things you can do with that program. I don't think people realize like when you like so it's got a thirty day free trial and it's sixty bucks to buy it like forever. That's forever. I well, that's not bad. It. Well, I know because so many things like so much a month nowadays. Well, it's sixty bucks to buy it forever, just so there's no confusion. There's also a hundred and twenty dollar version. That is if you're that's if you have a CO two laser. So if you just have a diode, just buy the cheap one. You don't need the other one unless you're going to have a CO two laser, but. I mean, like learning Lightburn is it, it, like if you never worked with a vector based program before. Um, and I know I'm not, we're not, yeah. I'm not trying to. Okay. Ex- I have not. We'll right just now, go, we'll just go with, I have not. Is there's a learning curve to it. Mm-hmm. So it's really nice to have like a non technical version to at least like engrave some things while you're trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Like if you notice, like a lot of diode laser, like their videos on their units, they're always doing really simple designs. I got gotcha. you. Well, that's for two reasons. It's one is it's like, oh hey, look, this is how easily you can do a simple design. But the other thing is, a simple design also takes a lot less time to carve. So or engrave, yeah. So okay, that makes sense. Well, this was this was fun. I've never had an I was going to say an on camera lesson, but uh, an on microphone lesson. On mic, baby. On the mm. mic with Mike. Yeah, but you're not Mike. That was a direct quote from Bad Boys. I know, but it doesn't matter because you're not Mike. But it's a mic. Don't you understand? Sorry, Sometimes I'm sorry. Go, I need to verbalize shaking my head. You gotta go and rolling my eyes. You have to go for the movie quote sometimes, all the time. Mm. On the mic, I roll. Mic, mic, I roll. Mic, mic. <laughs> <sighs> there it is. There it is. I've, I've been, I've been watching our daughter. What? Oh no, no! I was like, that was that, that was the sound of Nick one. <laughs> <laughs> we let him think that um, okay so what are we doing next week you, we don't, know. you don't have anything in your hands so we, I know, you know. I know. We, we are not about the planning this season All right. fly by the seat of our pants season alright I'm, I'm putting it out there to listeners do you guys want to like learn another thing like this should we film it next time oh yeah might be weird 
Um, I'd have to wear a bra then. Well, okay, great. Now we have to do the next one fucking on camera. Cause, you know, I don't know. Our, our listenership is like 99% male. All right. So we don't know. We don't know. Thanks for playing. <laughs> <laughs> Keep making shit. <laughs> <laughs>